Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2. In this episode I hope to begin our attempts to explore Mars. And of course uh, we haven't actually been to uh, Mars with this texture yet. We've sent some probes. As you can see we've uh, still got some orbiting communication satellites around Mars. But uh, we haven't landed anything on it that's for sure. Uh, but we're not going to do that just yet. Uh, there is an opportunity to do something slightly easier to test things out and I want to do that. That is of course to send a probe to land on one of the moons of Mars, Bop or Gilly. And so I think, uh, 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 I say Bop or Gilly, of course I mean Phobos and Deimos. And of course uh, the one we're aiming for is Phobos, the one that's closer in and also larger. Uh, when I say larger, it's not that much larger. It's still got uh, less than, um, what, uh, point, uh, okay, uh, less than 1% of uh, Earth gravity. Definitely less than 1%. Uh, probably even a smaller fraction of that. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's got to become important, uh, but let us not uh, consider that just yet. Uh, it also orbits fairly close. You can see it's only orbiting at an altitude of uh, 6,000 kilometers. So that's interesting. It has a period, I, I, I think it, uh, I, I know that in uh, daylight it passes overhead in four hours. I read that in a book somewhere. So uh, every day it goes around twice, something like that. Okay, so we are going to aim for that. There is, of course, a hitch in that there is time delay. And trying to land something with a two minute time delay, this is probably going to fail. So uh, let's get it over with as quickly as possible. Uh, so off to the VAB. Okay, so for this mission, I haven't named it after a sci-fi author this time because I have a high probability of failure. And I don't want to uh, sort of name it after an honored sci-fi author if uh, I think it's going to fail. We'll, we'll name it uh, after one, uh, after it succeeds perhaps. Uh, but I've created a fairly robust little lander. Uh, I expect it to land at very uh, low speeds because of the low gravity of Phobos. Uh, so that's why micro landing struts are good enough. Uh, however, we do want to be able to accelerate and decelerate fairly quickly depending on how our Mars approach turns out. So we've got uh, 8 of the 1 kN thrusters. Uh, that's not too bad since they're very lightweight anyway. I mean, uh, they're just uh, 0.015 tons. Uh, total mass uh, 3.4 tons as you can see not very heavy at all but it's got a serious delta V that's why it's a general purpose lander because uh, this could land on on the moon without any problem so that's a thing that can be done. Um, what else? Well obviously we're packing a lot of science this time I don't know if we have enough uh, electric charge here because uh, as we know electric charge uh, diminishes quite quickly as we make our way off to uh, Mars but we'll have enough for the landing because even without solar panels the battery power in this we've got 25,000 units here and uh, almost 50,000 units there the battery power is about four days worth so uh, we could we should be able to make our Phobos landing and transmit the data pretty easily even if uh, we're destined to run out of electric charge here. Now that means we need electric charge on the way, which we will manage with the launcher. So uh, let's see now, we'll just use the Magni. But we're going to modify it a little bit. There we go. Now you'll see that uh, the Magni launcher is capable of lifting this up pretty easily on the first two stages, uh, getting it into orbit. And then the following stage, uh oh, no, I, I pressed shift, darn it. Oh, uh, that reminds me, actually we have to figure out what's up with this, this engine, right? Show engine GUI. This engine wasn't... Uh, wasn't gimbling last time. I don't know why. Let's see. It has uh, eight degrees of gimbal here. Hmm. So I don't know why it wasn't uh, maneuvering properly. 
Uh, maybe, I mean, this, this should be an okay sort of situation, but let me just separate it, make sure it's attached on its nodes so it's not uh, obstructed. Should be okay. All right. Um, so we have enough to get into orbit. Actually, we have a little bit too much, but once we attach the fairings, uh, it'll be reduced. Um, what I want to do is change this engine. You remember I replaced the original RL10 with uh, a common extensible cryogenic engine, which has the possibility of using methane, and that is what I'm going to do now. That means it's lower powered now, but it, its uh, fuel will not uh, evaporate along the way. It won't have boil off. So we can carry the fuel with us. Now that uh, creates this sort of situation, but you'll notice the much uh, larger delta V. We don't need it to b burn for 33 minutes though, so we can reduce the tank size. Remember it was burning liquid hydrogen, liquid oxygen before, and that takes up a lot more space. Uh, so we can reduce it to where these two end up with 9,500, which is uh, what we need for orbit. And we're pretty close, to, uh, we, we've passed that, so we can extend it just a little bit. Uh, maybe that'll do. So now we have a pretty, pretty good uh, third stage here, burning 5,000, more than 5,000 meters per second. And we can carry that along the way. So uh, we have the Ullage rockets there, though maybe we should get a few more of those. Ah, but uh, maneuvering is the thing. Maybe what we really need is to uh, have a little service module tank with some RCS. Yeah. And we probably don't need that much. Alright, so that's good. Oh, that this fairing was pretty heavy. It reduced our delta V by quite a lot, so we're gonna have to reduce this stage by a little bit more. The first two stages will still probably end up re-entering, and so we need, uh, and that's because of the fairing I'm about to add now. So we'll need the third stage to burn a bit. Okay, now like I said, we don't know if there's enough electric charge, so what we need to do is put some on the third stage itself. Just in case it isn't. We haven't gotten RTGs yet, and we haven't gotten larger solar panels, so I don't have too much choice. I don't know, uh, where can we stick these? Oh, we can add them here, can we? That's interesting. Okay, I've probably forgotten something, but uh, I'm gonna call this ready to go. Oh, they clip like that. Uh... Okay, so this is going to be the general purpose lander on the Magni 3. And we will see how this turns out. I don't know. I don't know why there's another stage in here. Oh, that's, oh yes, right, the boosters separate and then the, the first stage is still going for, looks like, 10 seconds. Okay. Alright, let's go with it. And... We need to uh, time warp in the tracking station in order to get the right alignment. Alright, so let's go there. Okay, so here we are. I've lined up with the moon in order to get our inclination right so we've only got 0.27 relative inclination with respect to the moon which should mean we're pretty close to the plane of the solar system the ecliptic now i need some windows otherwise but i guess we'll just go with orbit info that should be good enough for now all right still haven't configured that now my only worry is that the j2 won't gimbal even though it should gimbal and and uh, it has eight degrees of gimbling available. All else checks out. F3 is fine, even though we did a lot of time warping. So throttle up. 
SAS is on and uh, we are about to launch to the moon named for fear Phobos all right here we go I'm pressing spacebar a lot it just doesn't want to respond sometimes Ooh. Is it just lag or is it really the slow going up? It's lag. <laughs> uh, Mechjeb was very slowly popping out there. Uh, yeah, we've got a uh, pretty decent uh, sea level thrust weight ratio. Not huge, but decent, right? Very good all around, actually, these uh, numbers. One thing that's good is we do have the RCS ports on the on the third stage. Maybe that would be enough to control it, even if the second stage doesn't gimbal. That's not my preferred way to go, but there's a slight chance of that. Okay, booster separation. Very nice. Should put parachutes on those. They seem useful. <laughs> okay, here we go, and uh, no need to pitch any more because it's holding this uh, time to apoapsis pretty well. It's just uh, sine and cosine, right? Uh, oh, hold on, let's separate the fairings. Oh, I, I have to upgrade the procedural fairings in this install. Okay. Okay, there's that stage, and uh, here's the J2. No indication yet, but we've got a roll. And if it can't... well, it actually, the a single engine like this shouldn't be able to take care of a roll anyway, so I'm not going to be worried about that. It's the pitch that's uh, most critical. Okay, I uh, gotta get the key antenna out. So, activated that. Oh well, didn't knock the fairing out of the way, unfortunately. Okay, we've got some some control issues here. I'll let it go to 30 degrees and I'm going to tell it to hold at 30 degrees but now I'm going to use the R oh darn I'll use the probes RCS as well really don't want that wait is it not using these RCS ports oh it is okay Oh no. No, 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 no. Why is it... Is it the procedural fairing? No, 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 no. Uh, okay, stop that. Oh, fudge. Oh, crud. Why doesn't this en engine gibble? I attached it fairly well. I mean, made sure that all that is uh, handled properly. Huh. Okay. Uh, it's all maxing out, too. Let's see if we can bring it back here. Well, it's once again a good thing that our third stage has quite a bit of juice in it, but we still need to get uh, a lot more from this one. The pitch is going wrong.
I'm gonna take uh, personal control of this. It's not helping. This is bad. Well, I think we might have to replace the J2 with uh, more, with more. Uh, well, it, it looks like it's gambling. It's just uh, if you notice, the engine is turning, but the thrust isn't. Look at that. I don't know what to make of that. Let's see if uh, Smart ASS can hold it now. No, but it doesn't seem to. <laughs> well, we're not using too much of our MMH and N204, but still. This is not what it's supposed to be for. And we are not... I need to know our acceleration to figure out what pitch angle I should be at. Uh, I don't have that up right now and I'm trying to steer. Okay, so we're going to have to figure this out pretty quickly. Um, get SAS on this. So I don't know if anybody has any answer for this uh, J2 problem. Obviously this engine worked perfectly well before, but uh, now we're having all sorts of issues. Uh, 0.79 right now. Well, uh, we're definitely going to lose altitude. Key thing is if we can just gain speed, that'll be okay. Uh, but we have to do that above, let's say, uh, 90 kilometers. If uh, we hit 90 kilometers and don't get to a thrust to weight ratio of uh, about 1.4, uh, then we're going to have trouble. Now, uh, I can explain why I say that. Uh, at 1.4, the, the sign... Okay, so, uh, the, your upward uh, thrust is going to be the sign of the thrust, and your forward thrust is the cosine of the thrust, uh, with the angle, this angle here. So we're about 45 degrees, right? That's what that says, 40, 40 degrees. So right now we would take the sine of 40 uh, times our thrust to weight ratio times 9.8 because this is all in G. And so, well, right now it's irrelevant because even if we were pointing straight up, in which case the sine of that would be uh, 1. And so uh, then it would be 0.84 times 9.8 would be our acceleration upward. But uh, so you could just take the cosine, uh, the sine of the angle for the y component, and then the cosine for the x component. And so why I say uh, 1.4 is that at 1.4 the the cosine, the sine and cosine should be uh, more than one at this angle. Okay, so we're past uh, the thrust weight ratio of 1, so right now our vertical component is about uh, 0.7 G's and our horizontal component is about 0.7 G's. Uh, we're at 45 degree pitch angle. Again, I'm looking for a thrust weight ratio of 1.4 by 90 kilometers, otherwise we're going to start uh, overheating badly. Okay, we are now definitely past the point where this engine could have been used to bring us to orbit. It's uh, definitely got less fuel than that now. It's 
still it's propelling us to a fairly fairly quick velocity here so that's good right now it's still probable that we won't have to burn too much out of the third stage but we're getting pretty close to uh, the iffy situation Okay, 1.38, 1.39, and above 90 kilometers, we should be okay. And we're about to turn positive on the vertical speed here. Well, this is very disappointing, so we're going to have to work on this. Don't know what's up with this J2. And uh, it's, uh, it's doubly bad because in the new version of Realism Overhaul, we uh, don't have the J2X. I would definitely replace this with the J2X, but uh, that's no longer part of Realism Overhaul uh, real engines. So, used to be an option, but is not right now. I would expect that we'll need to take about 500 out of the, uh, maybe 600 out of the third stage. Okay, that's the troublesome second stage. Off it goes. Okay, that's just a fairing. Pretty heavy fairing, too. Okay, uh, we don't need RCS constantly firing now because this engine can gimbal. We could probably coast for a while, but maybe we should just uh, test it out now. Now, the interesting thing about CECE, uh, -E -E, if you will, we'll just call it that, is that it does throttle. That's the one uh, advantage of it over the RL-10. That's the big development. Okay, at this point we'll coast to Apoapsis and then light for orbit. Here we are. Relight is good. That's nice. So I think I said uh, 600, so I'm looking for a 3,900 to 4,000 meters per second left on this stage. Okay, so uh, 204 by 189, a little bit low, but that's fine. For a transit, that's pretty good. Uh, took a little bit more than I thought it would, but uh, let's get our uh, Trans Mars injection plotted. Okay, so I've got the the encounter at 58,000 kilometers, which is pretty far away for compared to what I normally manage. But uh, we've got all sorts of problems. First of all, we've got the fact that really uh, we, we're uh, short on Delta V. We've got uh, burn of practically the entire remaining third stage here and then we still need to do a 778 meter per second correction halfway through because we're so far away from the ascending and descending nodes so this is all very not good so we'll complete this uh, initial burn and then we'll have to wait until the next episode to figure out whether we can actually do this. My plan for landing on Phobos, of course with the time delay, uh, multi-minute time delay, uh, is to burn off all the horizontal velocity first. And then the vertical component should be fairly slow because I just checked, Phobos's gravity is like one two thousandth of uh, Earth's. That's uh, 0 0.0057 meters per second, I think it was. That uh, means per second squared. 
Um, so yeah, not not much there. So I'm hoping just to kill horizontal velocity and so drift down. I don't know if that'll work or not, but uh, we'll see. I can definitely do the math on how fast our impact speed will be. So if I know the height above the terrain and uh, we zero out the velocity, I can figure out everything else from there. So math is not a problem. My patience with uh, signal delay issues might be a problem. Okay, we probably need to needed to have started before this already, so let's see. Uh, well, it says pressurized, so let's go. Yeah, a bit late. Uh, we'll probably... I think what we're going to do is we're going to burn a bit now. Go back around and burn on a second pass since it's a 17 minute burn according to this, but let's see what it really is. Uh, 11 minute burn? Yeah, I still think we can do uh, two passes with that rather than trying to do it all at once. Oh, we seem to be deviating. Uh, what? Why? Here, uh, here's RCS. Uh, Smarty SS is just not good at this anymore. Something about the J2 engine just uh, messed up uh, Smart ASS, go figure. Oh, it's because it's... A no, I had it on Node, so that this doesn't matter. Or did I press Execute, maybe? Okay, I think at this point I'm gonna shut it down and then uh, go around for another pass. So there we are. I don't know if it'll be okay if I just uh, keep it hanging out there. But, yep, going around. Okay, here we go. Check if it's pressurized. Yes, it is. Alright. It shouldn't be this much, though. I'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, this is not right. Okay, to my surprise, we ran out of uh, liquid methane and liquid oxygen quicker than I thought we would. Seems like we're a little bit short of the mark here. Let's just uh, get rid of all the stuff. Um, no, we're okay. Now we can't separate from the third stage yet because it's got part of our solar panelry. And also, uh, we w won't have enough space uh, in the lander to move all of the MHN-204 anyway, so we're not really wasting fuel. If we detach the third stage, we would be wasting more. Okay, I think I've got it. We've got uh, Duna Periapsis of 122 after the mid-course uh, plane change. It is mostly a plane change. And so that'll cost us 851. Uh, we obviously don't have any fuel in the, in the third stage anymore. If we can actually see our craft anymore. There we are. Um, we do have uh, 77 meters per second in the Ullage rockets which is quite a lot, but that's only because uh, the rest of the tank is empty, so really they're not doing as much work as they once were. And then another 3045 in the lander itself, though that can be uh, boosted up more if we transfer the RCS fuel from third stage up, but not by much. It'll be boosted to about 3100. Um, well, I mean, then it's tough to calculate because uh, we could uh, send even more up than is the capacity of the lander. But uh, we'll get to that in the next episode, I think. I, I think I'm pretty much spent after trying to rescue the 
rocket from its faulty second stage, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm done for today. Uh, so, so yeah, uh, we'll take a look at whether this can get to Mars properly, and then whether it can conduct its mission around Phobos. It's a pretty dodgy thing. We'll try and send as much, uh, obviously once it's landed, we're not uh, trying to return it back to Earth. Uh, we're going to be sending the information anyway, so we'll try and send as much as we can. We've got plenty of instruments. Once we get into the vicinity of uh, Phobos, we can do a GUI experiment and some gravioli and temperature. I don't think the temperature will work, but still. We've got some uh, scientific possibilities ahead of us, even if we don't make the landing, which is the tough part. Alright, so uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.